In today's video, I show you the exact order I use when assessing shoulder MRI. Okay, so let's have a look how I assess a shoulder MR, which structure I use, and basically the way I'm going to assess the images is also the way I will report. So we always, or I always start off with the shoulder roof. Take your axials and look at the AC joint, whether there is osteoarthritis, whether there, there is an os acromiale or any, any other variant. You can also have a look on your sagittals and describe the type of acromion, in this case type 2, and also see whether there is bone marrow edema or some soft tissue reaction if you have a AC joint osteoarthritis that might be symptomatic. Also make sure you assess the subacromial bursa, check whether there is fluid inside it, whether you have any other abnormalities here at this region and if you're at this location also have a look at the deltoid origin here which sometimes in rotator cuff disease or in advanced rotator cuff disease can actually also tear. The next thing you want to look at is the rotator cuff itself. I always start off with the supraspinatus tendon and make sure you go all the way to your anterior position and here you can see the footprint of the supraspinatus tendon inserting here onto this facet here. Cartilage is going up to here and then there is the insertion. If you go further posteriorly then there is the inverse spinatus inserting slightly overlapping and you can see this also on your sagittal views. Start off with the central tendon, the central slip here, move it uh, laterally and then you can see the insertion here of the supraspinatus tendon and here of the infraspinatus tendon. Then also have a look at the teres minor tendon here, typically it's normal. And the last tendon is the subscapularis tendon, which is inserting here into the minor tubercle. Once you have described all the rotator cuff tendons, then have a look at the rotator interval. The rotator interval is located, as it says, between the rotator cuff tendons. It's this region here, this fat tissue here, and make sure that there is fat tissue first of all and sometimes you can see it's obliterated with muscle is intense tissue fibrotic tissue here and on your fluid sensitive sequences sometimes there is also a little bit of edema and you might even have enhancement there in case of patients with a symptomatic frozen shoulder it's one of the signs of frozen shoulder and then the next thing is the long biceps tendon make sure you start off with the origin here and then you can follow its movement nicely down into the bicipital groove. Check it on all your available sequences. It's nicely central here in the canal so it's not medially subluxated and also here you can see the pulley, the biceps pulley which is a little bit thickened but the tendon itself position wise it's okay. The next thing you want to look at are the periarticular soft tissue and the musculature. It's easy to start off with the rotator cuff muscles. You can see they're all nice, no fatty streaks, no atrophy. And if you look on your fluid sensitive sequences, also there is no edema. Next thing you want to look at is the other periarticular soft tissues. And here basically make sure that there are no enlarged lymph nodes not well depicted here but depending on your protocol sometimes you can really see the axillary uh, structures and lymph nodes so make sure you don't miss anything there and while you're at it also have a look at the lung you don't want to miss lung cancer or any other abnormalities there the last region we want to assess is the glenohumeral joint start off with the cartilage and the position of the head you can see the cartilage here nice and smoothly Often you have cartilage defects up here, which are sometimes not so easy to miss if you're not specifically looking there. Also make sure you assess the cartilage in the glenoid fossa. Also use your transverse sections here. Then you want to assess the labrum. 
from all the way up, all the way down, whether there are any slap tears or any other abnormalities, as in this case, where the labrum is displaced medially, matching the little hill sex lesion there of the anterior, anterior inferior shoulder luxation. And you also want to see whether there are any synovial proliferations, make sure you assess all the other ligaments, the inferior glenohumeral ligaments, the middle one, and so on. So let's recap. I always start off with the shoulder roof, next is the rotator cuff tendons, then I assess the long biceps tendon and also the rotator interval, next are the periarticular soft tissue and musculature, and then I go on to the glenohumeral joint. I would like to hear your approach to shoulder MRI, so please comment below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and also hit the like button.